Welcome to the Solo Q Super Show. I'm your host, Crumbs. We release an episode every Friday where we have special guests. And this week's guest, we've got Santorin, FlyQuest's very own jungler, and Dongwap, one of the premier League of Legends and Solo Q creators. You might have known him from videos like the Skarner Top Lane, how to take a brain dead champion like Garen into Masters, or are Asians really bad drivers? How are you guys doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm great, thanks. <laughs> I can't I took believe a, you watched that. I took video. a look through your videos, and there was one that stood out. One That's is like... not like the others. <laughs> That has like, like the other ones have like 600k views, and then that one has like, like two views. Like, oh, really? It's like nothing. <laughs> I respect okay. the effort to get out of the League of Legends world and tackle greater issues that you are noticing in the world. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm highly educated, as you can tell. I have a, I have a high school degree, and I feel that I'm well equipped to deal with such complicated, uh, complicated issues. So. Definitely want to flex my knowledge here a little bit. Well, I'm glad you put yourself out there as the foremost expert on complicated issues. We got a big one in hand. Season 10 solo queue. Wow. What's going on? Because I think Centaurin thinks it's worse than last season. And I want to get his thoughts and then your own, Dongwa, because I think there's a lot of people that have very polarizing opinions of what to do. Yeah, let's say it's definitely worse so i made one of my accounts love season nine i wrote it in danish and now i actually love season nine like i don't i really hate <laughs> season 10 so no. now it's working um i just feel like don't know what riot does with matchmaking your single season i feel like it's worse over time um for example like you're you're brought up that like you have negative win rate but you're climbing and i see people who just play like 500 games and then they continue to climb and I'm like, who is this guy? He's suddenly like top 50 and so you never heard of him and he's like maybe master to your last season. So it's really odd to me. So matchmaking seems to come up as the number one source. We'll dive into the fact that I have a negative win rate and continue to climb later, <laughs> which we will be tracking this feat to see how high can somebody go with a negative win rate. In your eyes, Nong, what has been going on? Because you said you don't get to play as much, so you have a different perspective from Santorin on Season 10. I mean, I feel like the beginning of, the, of any season is just really crap. Just because, like, during... I feel like at the start of every season, a lot of players who don't play a lot... Because usually everyone takes a break during preseason, right? Because everyone seems to not care about preseason and say preseason doesn't matter. They play troll picks. They don't really try hard. No one really gives a shit about preseason. They say your rank doesn't even matter in preseason. And so it's sort of like a come down from that. And it's like all these players playing um, who haven't been playing. And so you get these really wonky games where you're going to have rusty players. You're going to have people who haven't played in a very long time. You're going to have, you know, people who just don't really care about the game that much because they've been on a hiatus and they don't really care about tryharding that much. Uh, so I feel like it's just the same every season. People will just say the same thing. It's like uh, the matchmaking's broken, but that's just like, at the start of every season, it'll kind of bottom out by the end of, I would say, in a, in a month or so when things start to return uh, to normal. But uh, to the to the point of like having a negative win rate and still climbing, I feel like that's just because your guys' MMR is high enough that even if uh, you're losing games, you're still going to... Because th uh, the system naturally puts you uh, into like Diamond 5, right? And so th the lowest you can go is, I think, Diamond 5 if you're a challenger player last season. And you're you're just gonna be able to to climb naturally because your MMR is super high. Like if you were challenger last season, you're playing a down five. The system is just gonna automatically push you towards master tier if your MMR is challenger level, right? Yeah, and that sounds like a problem <laughs> because I should probably have to prove myself to be challenger at the time because I've given up my role, right? I I could consider myself a challenger player. But you proved if yourself last junk. season. Yes, so I've proved myself in a different role, and now that I switched roles, it's rewarding me with the same MMR from last season into the same position, even though I have nothing to do with it anymore. So, so you think that your MMR should decrease if you decide to play a different role? Is that is that what you're saying? Well, 
I think it should take into consideration more of how you're currently doing than your previous accolades. But how how are they supposed to rank you then if you if they're not going to take you? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I have not thought about how matchmaking works at all. But from what you're saying, you think that a lot of this is the growing pains of a new season, and I definitely see it because I think Centaurin, you're one of the outliers of somebody that has a legitimate reason to care about solo queue all year long. Every day you're playing is a great time to really give it your all. Whereas I think most people don't give a shit, you know, maybe a few weeks out of the year, they might be actually trying their hardest, but not to the point where it's a life or death that they get this champion or master this new pick. So I see both your guys' sentiment very valid here. And it brings me to one that I think everybody has agreement on, Aphelios. Do we still know what he does? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I gave up reading that shit. <laughs> did you even give it a shot? I'll tell you. I didn't. Give I it, did. I didn't no, give I it really did. I looked at his. I tried to. I, what I usually do whenever a new champion comes out is I try to memorize because most of my ability in League has just been based off of like memorizing things and like game knowledge. I have no mechanical skill. Like I play. I play Hack Room. I play uh, Cled. I play Hack like uh, Rumble. Just like the most like mash your face on the keyboard champions ever so i just try to memorize all the key ability with aphelios i'm like i don't i'm this is just no no because this is going to get changed in every single patch for the next i would say three months like something in aphelios is going to get nerfed something in aphelios is going to get changed this is just right this is alternative this is fire of a secondary weapon crescendium nerfed by 500 damage what is that? No one knows. You're a poor player. What do you do? Like, do you ask your AD, hey, uh, what can you root him? What do you like? What do I have to do to help you out? <clears throat> you need help, even? Can you snipe him? Like, I don't know how to begin the conversation. Yeah, so uh I think Wazel does a good job of saying, like, yo, I have root gun, like I can look to snare them and stuff like that. But I remember Aphelius came out before we started screaming. I'm like, Jason. Once we get in season, I got to sit behind you and watch some Aphelios gameplay because I have no idea what this champion does. And I feel like he can do so many different combos, like uh, long range hit you with three different abilities or some stuff like that. So I have no idea what's going on. I saw a Reddit post where people are hiding guns to trick people because the clarity is so low. Now, if you combine that low ass clarity with the point that Dong was saying, where in the early season, people don't give a shit. How is anybody oh. knowing what Aphelios does? Like that champion and maybe set to an extent are probably a big reason why people are behaving the way they are in solo queue right now. With every new addition, like you're just going to meet people that don't care, that don't learn the pick and just get bopped by it. Yeah, definitely. And then there's people who now also experimenting with like Sona and Soraka top. Oh, so yeah. So that's a whole other deal where they'll just like hit level five. All right, time so, to try lane ball in. I, I, I want you guys to follow me on this one. I think Soraka is the coronavirus of League. Now, here's why. It comes out of nowhere, immediately spreads to every region, and we band together to try to tell Riot to get rid of it ASAP because we don't want it in our system. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But the coronavirus isn't as deadly as Soraka. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite. Corona it heals us. I mean, the coronavirus has only killed, what, 500 people so far? I feel like Soraka has killed more. <laughs> <laughs> well, what should we do about a failure stand? Because people have to play it. People will play it. He's still good. Is it going to be nerfed onto the ground? Or do we legitimately need to get the quickest rework of all time i mean there's i mean they're not going to rework it that's that's definitely sure they, they don't usually rework champions for like at least a year or two out but I, the, the thing with aphelios is that i actually found that aphelios is actually pretty easy to run i mean as a top laner he's just an immobile adc so i just kind of play him the same way as i do with all the other immobile adc i just kind of try to run at him and kill him and he is squishy, like he's he's like every other AD that you just build full damage and then you still get one popped. But with Aphelios, I 
I just feel like they need to like just just to do a little indicator like on the top of his head to show like what he's about to do to you or what he could potentially Doesn't do. Doesn't he to already you. have like, that? <clears throat> the gun color really, changes like, and the gun color tells you what he's about to do. The gun color doesn't matter. No, no, no. Like a like a little thing, like a little like like maybe little symbols, you know, like like a stop sign in, in that kind of idea. Like there's there's okay. one that's a long range arrow. There's one that's a big root. One, uh, there's one that's a uh, a dick that's about to fuck you. Like that's just <laughs> like you just you the just put come out. Ones. <laughs> run away. Yeah. You just put. Am I allowed to swear on this? I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, you just put like specific things to to make sure that we we know like the gun color change. I'm partially colorblind, so I don't even I didn't even oh, know that his gun partially changed. Jesus, brutal. <laughs> oh my god, we forgot about that part. So now you can legit get confused by the same thing that's supposed to tell you what's going on. Yeah, I I, I had no idea that he, his color is even. I, I didn't even know that. Okay, so that's helpful information. I mean, maybe even the symbols wouldn't help because then you'd have to put colors on that too. I feel like if you made them big enough and clear enough, uh, that that would. I mean, like a dig in the ass is a, is a pretty clear indication. Doesn't of what's that mean that this champion just was too much? If you need to correct it with a series of symbols that pop up whenever he's about to cast a spell. Well, what, what what do you mean by too much though? So I, I think that designers and people that make champions take a lot of pride in this. You know, it's a very serious job where you have mm -hmm. a lot of creative input and you would be hurt if your baby comes out, what you thought would be game breaking suddenly is like, Oh, you just confused everybody change it right somebody comes back to you say hey you know that thing you created a few months ago where you put all that last year worth of your time yeah people didn't like it we need you to make it dumb we need you to make it as mundo like as possible i think that's a grace period that they're probably not gonna go through like you said where the rework is so unlikely so either a band-aid fix happens in my opinion like some sort of visual clarity or you just nerf him so much after everyone bought all the skins of course <laughs> that then you know. then you can start thinking about how to reintroduce him because if you just make him not popular people aren't going to pick him up and they'll forget about how hard it was to look after him i mean in terms of something being too much um i just think that all you really need to do is just to make make his visuals a lot clearer because there's a lot of people who don't watch champion spotlights they don't read patch notes they don't do anything um and they figure out the champions and what they do and they're like oh this is pretty clear you know like i i remember when i started playing league and i didn't know i didn't watch champion spotlights so i didn't do any of that but like after a few games of playing you know you figure out oh this is what this champion does with Ophelios, i've i've played against him quite a bit and I still don't know what the fuck he does in a lot of his in a lot of his uh, abilities. Like I know he has a turret, I know his ultimate can blow up half my team, but other than that, I mean, I know he has super long range, but there's like it's very unclear as in terms of like how to play around that and all of that. So I think if you just make his visuals more clear, it it should be it should be okay. All right, clear visuals and any parting thoughts from your end, Centaurian mm -hmm. on Aphelios? I think it also goes hand in hand with supports. So you're talking about like top lane where you can just go at him. But if there's a Braum in the picture or like Leona, Nautilus, all these disgustingly OP champions, uh, you're just going to get run yeah, over. Good so. luck. Because <laughs> you're, see, we're dealing with the random Aphelios that have no supports. You're dealing with the Aphelios that has an entire team ready to die for him. Yeah. That sounds like a big problem. <laughs> so one of the problems that, is consistent in everybody's solo queue season is how the hell do I climb? And this is a show about solo queue. And we want to know how do you guys climb? I want to hear tips from you guys. What would you say to somebody that's having a hard time that might be thinking that this is the worst season yet? You know, they're on the brink of, do I just go back to a Rams? Do I play our earth all the time? Or is there still sanity and worth honor in ranked? What would you say to them? You can, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah use the terrace. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I mean, normally when people ask me, I'll always say limit your champion pool, only play like two or three different champions. Um, obviously, 
the more meta they are, the better. But you can honestly win on any specific champion. Like in high yellow, there's like Di Diana one tricks, any one tricks, like anything. Um, so I definitely limit my champion pool. And then <clears throat> I'd always focus on my own gameplay. I'm definitely someone that also complains about my teammates. But in general, like I focus on my own gameplay um, and just try to improve every single game. Because there's always going to be games where you have trolls, FKs, DCs. All right, randomly forgets to fix the rune box. So everyone has random runes. Yeah, that did happen <laughs> yesterday a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So I think just like always focusing on yourself and learning something every single game. Okay, that's just great advice for life in general, right? Just yeah. <laughs> okay. What about you, Don? Um. So to to expand on uh what Santorin said to focus on your champion pool. Um. I, I, I tell that to a lot of people, but they just don't seem to want to listen because they say things like, oh, it's just more fun to to play more champions. A and it is, and I understand, because like if you play the same thing for 100 games, it gets really stale and really boring. Uh, but the reason that most pros and most like high level players will tell you to play one champion over and over again is because most of League of Legends is just knowledge-based. You know, If you look at a game of League of Legends, the mechanics are only a really small part of the actual game. You know, most of the game is it, you have CSing, you have map rotations, you have objective control, you have um, uh, map awareness, warding, uh, all of these different things that are learned by playing the game. And when you're playing different champions, what you're doing often is you're just focusing on the raw mechanics of what those champions do. And so like, if I, if I just randomly pick up Zed, I'm not focusing on the map awareness, I'm focusing on are my uh, are my combos clean? Uh, are my skill shots landing? How does this champion work? What are, what are the best builds on it? You know, as opposed to if you just played the same champion over and over again, you have these things all nailed down, and you have all of these things remembered, and that way you can actually improve and get better at the game, and you can focus on you know map awareness or uh, CSing or whatever it is that you're you're lacking in. So your advice is unanimously. Zero in on your champion pool so that you can focus on the things that matter more while you're mastering the mechanics that you need to get Z there. Zero in on your champion pool. Pick a champion that is not like... I, I wouldn't say... Pick a champion that doesn't get banned too often and that doesn't uh, show up as too OP because you're, you're not going to have a good time if... like You, you obviously can't main... Um, I would say set right now because he's just he's got a high ban rate. So maybe just main something that has a little bit less um with a lower mechanical roof. Uh it's just better to be able to it's more important that you improve yourself as a player as opposed to just focusing on what the meta says is OP because you as a player can get better and change, but you you have no control over what riot nerfs, what riot buffs, uh, over any of those things. But you do have control over how good your map awareness is, how good your CSing is, how good your trading is, and all those other things. So, Okay. Now, if it comes back to me and I have to give my advice, I will say that you can ignore that advice and play Phil. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think Phil does help because I actually, I know all the champions and how they work. So I can just focus on the things that I know each champion should be doing. So if I know I'm playing Blitzcrank, I know what a Blitzcrank has to do. I know what a Janna has to do, what a Soraka has to do. And I'm actually going to double down on that and play Devil's Advocate because I think that if you're trying to get good at the game in general, you're going to need to know how every champion works, no matter what. It's going to be played. If you don't know what every champion and every role does and how it fits into the grand scheme, you're not going to be as good as you could be. Now, will you reach a higher ceiling if you play one role and one pick only? Absolutely. But over the long term, I think that playing Phil gives you a much greater sense of what League of Legends is. And I see it as attacking in controlled style in RuneScape. Do you, are you guys familiar with RuneScape? No. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Losing the audience here. All right. Well, anyways, I, I can still use the example. So instead of getting experience in an, a certain attack, so if you attack with strength, you get experience in strength. Or if you attack with attack, you get experience in attack and defense. You choose a mode that's called controlled. So this experience is split amongst all three modes. So you level up everything really slowly because it's diverged, but 
you still get experience for everything. So that's what I think a lot of people, and maybe starting with normal games to play Phil, just to have a better sense of, of what's going on. And usually I find that right now, I can actually play Phil and play only two picks. There's enough champion, like I can play Rumble, top, mid, jungle, and I can play support Blitzcrank. And the odds that I get AD are really low, and maybe I'll, I can play Ascendant. So I don't think the pool is actually that large for champions, that it keeps it things interestingly enough that you're not one-tricking, and you're also having the fun of getting one or two happy games. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, especially for a jungler, like even in professional play, I find it really helpful if I know exactly how lanes play out. So <clears throat> every time I'm autofill, I pick champions that are meta, and then I'll just like try to understand how the lane works. Uh, because like for example, jungle paths, like who gets priority, how do they want to get break, broke out of the game, like when should we fight, that kind of stuff. I feel like actually understanding roles in every single lane is really helpful for jungle at least. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that. Dong, anything to say about uh, my my fill? Because I can actually, I'm gonna go find right now my exact rating and win rate, so we can have more evidence. Here. I believe you said you have a negative win rate. It though, is. It is negative. It is negative win rate. I can confirm that. So, is that really a, a great advice to give when? Well, win I can rate is negative? throw something else on. There's a lot of pro players that like a 30 percent win rate. All right. So, so <laughs> I am rank seven thousand five hundred and seventy. Mm-hmm. 41 wins, 63 losses, oh my God. Mm -hmm. 39% win rate. Mm -hmm. So is and that kind of really me. great advice to give to people when you have a... So I'll tell you, the season started with a 20% win rate. Win like rate. Oh my. So the season started lower. <laughs> and currently okay. my highest win rate, the only win rate above 50% <laughs> is Soraka at oh, 75%. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> And the reason that your MMR is high is because uh, you spent last season and you did really well last season, right? Yeah, so I think that that yeah. actually and is... you were playing jungle, I believe, it's exclusively, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know... So the Phil, system uh, is Phil not argument. demoting me. The system should be demoting me is what I, uh -huh. what I think well, should Well, I'm happen. not here defending the system. I thought we were just talking about the best way to climb and... <laughs> best way to pick one role and do that so uh you kind of proven my argument here sir. you're right you're right the best way to climb is not that well the best another great way to climb is keeping an eyes on the changes inside the game patches guys have you guys taken a look at patch 10.3 where a colleague got what she deserved Woo! Yep. any major um, thoughts any any buffs because i know a lot of people were not feeling some of the champions that Riot wants to reintroduce into the game. Uh, Sejuani Centaurin, are you been practicing her? Perfect champion for me. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly don't understand why Riot loves this champion. Because basically, every single season when Sejuani becomes meta, all tank junglers become meta. All mid laners, uh, high wave clear, SCR, Kogi, that kind of yeah. stuff. And then Bolin, just like the most boring lanes, just AFK farming the entire game. I honestly don't understand what they have about Sejuani. Luckily, I don't think the buff is big enough, but they're going the wrong way. So you think Sejuani represents an entire shift in the meta, and that single pick just shifts the entire landscape? I think so, especially with them increasing XP as well. Because right now, the reason why people don't play tanks is because you're too underleveled. You get one shot by anything. So if they buff XP, where junglers are now more tanky or like more XP, um, Every single time Sajani is meta, the counters are like Sag, like those kind of picks. Scanner, another one. And I feel like stuff like Lee Sin, if Sajani is strong enough, like you can't really do anything to him. And that's why like it's a big issue. Yeah, okay. Hmm. I would have liked to see some more immediate Soraka nerfs that <laughs> I feel would would have been helpful. I, I think, uh, I mean, Riot has acknowledged openly that Soraka is broken right now. But I would have liked to see... I mean, just some, just some sim symbol, like symbolic nerfs would be nice, just to let the players know that, yeah, we're aware of this crap, and we're aware that this needs to be fixed. That did, that would be nice. Did you know that um, Soraka's star call is faster the closer it is to her? I did not know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that that's why she's a pain in the ass to chase. By the way, I so see. that's just the random strength that she has. Where I would have appreciated, like you, Dong. If that was something that was nerfed, because nobody would have known, it just would have said, "Hey, you know what? 
we're trying to we're trying to get rid of this, but we're 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 taking it slow. I mean, that's what they with Greg is ultimate, I believe. Where like if you drop it exactly on top of you, way faster. Now yeah. It's like a longer dur- duration. I think that'll be good. I think one really interesting um, argument that I saw recently uh, was that if the meta in top lane was not so focused on immobile bruisers, because the strongest top laners right now in terms of AD bruisers are like Set and Darius, and those two are super immobile. If champions like Riven and Camille were a little bit better, then I feel like Soraka would have no place in the top lane just because she would just get run over and dove and just like free farmed all game long. Um, so I, I feel like maybe it's also a result of immobile bruisers like Darius and Set being a little bit too strong uh, in terms of just their raw numbers. Uh, and I think if that came down a little bit, Soraka herself would probably be played less. So that's actually the same approach I used in one of my recent games against Soraka. I just played Nasus. <laughs> I did nothing all game, and then I hit 500 stacks at 15 minutes. And, and I just won because I can get away with it in this ELO. I saw a game that had Soraka and Sona in the top lane. That was the matchup. Have you guys encountered that yet? Sona as that well. Matchup. Is that worse? Is that better? Is that a problem that we have not addressed, that we're just tunnel visioned on Soraka? Uh, I personally hate Sona because the only way this champion wins is by grouping. So what happens in solo queue? You hit one item. Hey, guys, let's five man somewhere. And yeah, so- that's what happened. She just <laughs> roamed all game. She didn't lane. Yeah, so I've seen people have the strategy of hit level five, so you have three points on this skill, walk straight bot lane, just try lane for the rest of the game and hope the enemy top lane is TP's spot. It's like... Guys, come on. Like, and <laughs> that then have works. Dark yeah, Dude, it, works. it works. It actually works. And there's also games where the game is unwinnable for Sersona. And then people will just start trolling a little bit because like it's fun, like keep killing her. But she scales really, really well, man. And suddenly she gets like a one K bounty and she's one ing the game. Wait, what do you build on God. that? Do you build f- full AP or full support? You go like Dark Harvest with like Lich Bane and stuff like that, yeah. So like damage. <laughs> okay. Hey, there are mm-hmm wild things happening in solo queue. Yep. Some things that are just not worth seeing. You you just didn't need to go there. It's like a room in your head that you just you just don't go there. You just leave it and you know it exists, but you never want to actually meet it face to face. Jungle XP changes. Is it enough? <clears throat> um <clears throat> well it depends for solo queue or competitive. I mean for competitive. Solo queues. This solo is a queue? solo queue super oh. show. Right. Um, yeah. I think it'll help a little bit, but I was like looking at it. It's still worse than last season in terms of XP. Um, and I think they'll have to like nerf support to make jungle stronger because right now it's like support can goddamn one you. And I think, which also comes back to the Soraka point, like the reason why Soraka top works is because redemption is really cheap. Champ, uh, items like Athens are really cheap too. So like, you hit like really early spikes in the game and now with support items being so OP, like you get so much gold. I feel like that just nerfs jungle as a role in general. Um, that's my take on it. And then, obviously, I mean, you can carry on solo here right now with jungle. Like, even before this patch, jungle was still okay. Um, I think the biggest issue is, I think they have to target mid lane a little bit because I feel like mid lane is just too OP right now. Um, they hit level switch. Like, for example, like, I don't know if you watch LCS or something like that. Like, jungle will be, like, level 8. Cinder will be 11. He'll click Q and all, and the Rex side just gets one shot. Oh, yeah. It's like that kind of stuff is like, what too. the hell, man? And that does happen sometimes in solo queue, but not as frequently because, I mean, I'll be honest, like in solo queue, people always die to ganks. So you'll always be like pretty strong as jungler. Um, that's why I don't really even care too much about the XP changes, just because I feel like you can still carry as jungle right now. Hmm. I, I think it was in the LCS, there was a level 14 mid laner against a level nine jungler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. It's a hard life for them. Should junglers just be accepting the position and play Ivor in every game? Uh, I mean, we, want to play <laughs> we love trees. But <laughs> no like, one wants to play Ivor. <laughs> You're not Ivern an Ivor fan? Don't even want to play Ivor. You know, what's no. wrong with Ivor? I think I saw a video like about you. I saw a video on your channel about Ivor and how some guy yeah. reached rank one multiple times with it. What's up with that? Is it not a good pick he if was, somebody climbs? Because he, he was ballsy with them. He he just ran in and invaded. And just like... Actually, I don't even remember. That was so long ago. Honestly, I can't even remember that video and what he did. Well, I remember... I, I think he was... Uh, what did he do? I think that was Fragus that reached rank one. I, I actually, that was so long ago. Though. There's a guy doing it 
with Rengar. Like this is the common combo. It's well, uh, Ivor and mid Rengar, yeah. and the ones I've seen in NA are really bad. But really? when you look high up highlight montages of the really good Rengar Ivern combos, that looks like some of the most broken things I have ever seen because he can lay down a brush on top of a minion, uh, an enemy minion. So the Rengar in mid lane jumps from one brush to the minion to the other guy. So the gap closing is unreal. And then he puts another brush on top of you while he's there. So you just got jumped three times in less than a second. It's, is that LCS worthy? <clears throat> well, it's funny because I saw some LCS mid jungle dudes like actually try that stuff oh, in solo queue. And? I'll just say they weren't too good at it. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> but I mean, I, I've seen it be really strong, and I think, I mean, right now when I play solo queue, my prim ban is Rengar, because Rengar in solo queue, if he gets one or two kills early, especially the really good Rengar, so like, I think Scrub Noob is like really, really good Rengar. If that guy gets Rengar and he gets one or two kills early, I cannot play the game. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. What are the solo queue bans that we have right now? Because for me, it's Master Yi, not because I think Yi's broken, but because I'm tired of the boosters that have Tarek Yi. That's what's really screwing my games. That's a good one for sure. I mean, I'm a pro player, so I just spend all the one tricks because I don't want to play against stuff like that. Like Renga, yeah. Shago is actually a really good one on high right now because so many people that play AP Shago support a jungle, and it's like, I'm never going to face that in pro play. <laughs> I just ban whatever is the most popular champions because in solo queue, if you can just put someone off of their main, that really throws them off. And they're just, maybe they're like, let's say they're, diamond or their plat level but you you throw them on their secondary champion and they're they're playing at like a gold or a silver level so that so really fucks with them. that's actually a, a really interesting point for me where are you looking up your opponents when you're doing this because i assume you're banning knowing who you're facing for me uh generally no i usually play at uh either like well i used to play at around diamond three diamond two uh and so like generally i don't really know who i'm playing against I, I usually play at odd hours of the day. Like I would play sometimes like during noon and sometimes it's just like whenever I, like I had time between my videos and I just got a few games of solo queue in. So generally I, I wouldn't look up like, cause with Santorin, he's uh, in challenger and challengers are like 200. Um, like it's only like a thousand players. So you generally just knew everyone that was getting into a game. And usually I assume most of them would be on your friends lists. And so like, you just knew who was going to be in your game. But for me, it was just, Let's just ban whatever is like popular right now because that's just going to have the most statistical um yeah, the highest chance to hit somebody where it hurts. Yeah. Are you using in a website to find out what the most popular champion is, or are you basing it off of your own instincts? No, no, no. I use websites. I I look at um uh, champion.gg right now. Okay, because on our first episodes, a epi uh, point was really brought up that was very interesting where in solo queue, I think people want tryhards. And you want tryhards that a lot of the time have aspirations of being a pro. In pro games, scouting your opponent and target banning is an incredibly important part of the game. I mean, you don't have pro play without that aspect. So in solo queue, should you be using tools to scout out your opponent when you know you're in a champion select lobby right away to be very specific with your bands and try to make things more targeted towards your opponents? Or is that seen as BM or is it too try hard? Is it morally it too wrong? Too try hard nonsense. Right? Like, like where, where do what we stand on somebody? Too try hard yeah. nonsense. Exactly. Elo is Elo, sir. <laughs> too try hard. What? I mean, for me, it's what like, if I really try to hit rank one, if I really want to hit rank one, like every single champs, like I just copy the five names, put them into OPGG, and you see all their stats. Because there's a lot of people that dodge in high elo, so then you know who you're gonna face next game. Um, so like that's one way to do it. I can't go to the extent where if I see someone queue up on my friend list, I'm not gonna target his one trick. Like I can't. <laughs> that's my boundary. Um, but if I really want to win, like I could even like be like, hey guys, like in champs league, ban these champions because I know there's a one trick on the other team. Um, I don't really do that, and in... I'll always ban a one trick and like. When I play solo queue right now, but if I really want to win, I'd also start dodging games because I'll see people that I know either don't play well or like just do doesn't like fit my style. And th there's definitely times where dodging is good, but don't dodge too much. <laughs> Why not? Well, I mean, 
I guess it depends how much time you have. But for me, it's just like if I sit in 15 minute queue and then I champ select like five champs like selects later, I, I'll dodge. And then I have to wait in queue again for 15 minutes. It's just not time efficient for me. Um, unless I mean, I'll always dodge if there's a player I really don't like or someone that especially in one trick. The one thing that triggers me a lot is one tricks. That I can banned, tell <laughs> they get banned out. And they won't dodge. They'll just pick a champion they don't know how to play, and they'll be like, "Hey guys, I'm off my one trick. Please carry me." It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like come on, man. Yes. Like, <laughs> that's the worst. For me. The Rengar top one trick that's now playing Sona. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> Do you have a problem with one tricks as well, uh, Dong? No, I am. A, I'm basically a one trick. What are I you one tricking uh, right now? Well, right now I, I, I not, uh, I'm not one tricking. Well, I'm kind of playing Rumble, but. It's not like, well, it's just like generally pick? speaking, I like to pick, I like to pick a champion that's not in the meta. Uh, just because I, I hate getting banned out and I hate, uh, people who just pick like. It's in the big brain meta. Counters. It's in the big brain meta, right? The rest of the I, world plays it. The pro teams play. It's NA Soloki that doesn't believe in it at the moment. Not really. I mean, I see like impact playing it. I see a lot of high elo, like, uh, like I would say top 50 challenger players all pick up rumble. Uh, more so, like I, I hate the fact that he's being played mid now. That's kind of how you know a top laner is broken, is if he's able to move to the mid lane as well. Like Rumble and Clad are just, I think, overtuned and definitely need some tuning down. So I think they, I'm pretty sure they recently nerfed Rumble. Um, but back to the to the point of one tricks. Like I don't have a problem with one tricks, but um, it like if I'm really like if I want to climb, uh, why wouldn't I buy and ban out someone's one trick? I mean, I don't understand. Like if I have that situation and I really want to uh to go up in elo and just hit that rank one up why wouldn't i do that the only counterpoint i can think of as to not to do that is if you're actually actively trying to get better so let's say that i'm against a uh, i don't know a katarina one trick or something and i go mid lane and i'm like i'm gonna beat her at her best and i'm gonna and if i can't i'll learn something from this matchup and i'll improve from it like that would be the only scenario in which i i probably wouldn't like just actively go. Oh, he's on the other team. Just ban his pick out. How many times have you done that? Uh, very few. Just because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know any of the one tricks. Like, there's not. Uh, I'm like at my elo. It's just like if people are one tricking, they're they're one tricking like we weird shit like uh, Teemo and Yorick. Oh, and dude, that. I have been schooled by Teemo jungle. <laughs> Did you play against Manko? Uh, I think so. It was last season, and he just started in my jungle, and then nobody, because in in solo queue nobody start nobody guards your entrances. So then you just you're supposed to assume yeah. what the jungle path is, and then either invade with no prio and get collapsed, or go to your side and then find out that there's either a Teemo there and you're dead, or everything's stolen. So it was a hard time, and I'm scarred of it. But that's a good way to look at the players that have not been scarred, the ones that have been climbing solo queue and doing a really good job at it because we have the top 10 current solo queue players in a list right here. I don't know if you have this by your side, Dong, but I will read these out. And I want to get your guys to start on these. I think Santorin is going to be familiar with all these players. I don't know all of them. But I know most. We've got number one from Iron. I believe that's Core JJ. Yep. So Team Liquid support. Number two. Uh, any? Have you played with him in solo queue? What does he do? Cole? Yeah. He's just so good. I mean, he plays all the meta supports. And okay. then he'll always win lane. And then he's going to roam. And then support us. Great. Really and knows. there's no one that's that good in the NNA yep. solo queue ladder. He's playing Galio support. I yeah, love right it. Now, I yeah. love a good Galio. Love a good Galio. Uh, number two, always plan ahead. Who is That's that? That's uh, that seventeen-year-old. Yeah, so um, he's uh, he only plays roaming champion, so he'll play Italian Aurelian Soul, and he's really, really good. That at That guy. Yeah. yeah okay. He's, I thought he's he just always. So he he pretty much always just wins lane because he plays like champs like Talia and Aurelian Soul, and he just shoves really hard, and he just makes really good roams um, to other lanes, and just pretty much just carries. Uh, usually just go, goes to bot lane and just carries that lane. Uh, and he's really efficient in, in terms of like just everything he does in lane because he, he pretty much like nine times out of ten he'll just win his lane. Um, Sounds like you've scouted this guy. Carry. Yeah, I have. Um, he's, 
the reason I'm not doing him is because he's uh, he's a little toxic. So ah, just a little. Yeah, that means just he cares a little about toxic. the game. <laughs> right, just a I mean, he's a little young. That's the EU mentality. <laughs> oh, you care so much. <laughs> I don't. I personal rule. I I try not to do toxic. Right. Things, so. <laughs> Listen, my toxic strategy: mute all, still type. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> number three, Team Liquid Tactical. I believe that's the Academy AD. Yeah. So Tactical came from TSM last split. Do you have experience playing against him? Oh yeah, and funny enough, called JJ Dewis with Tactical. Son of a. Gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we know why those two have climbed. All right, uh, number four, EG Bay. I believe that is Bang. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I'm sure he's really good in solo queue. Mm -hmm. Number five, Stay Calm One. Who is that? CLG is top lane ruin. Really? Yeah. So that is he 51% win rate? No, he's actually like pretty high win rate now. I, I was surprised too because I think... He's one of the guys like I'd normally consider not trying too hard in solo queue. Yeah. Uh, like people are saying like he's playing Teemo Tub and stuff like that. But uh, he's actually like trying really hard right now. And it's funny because at least most of the CLG members have like a stay calm account. So like Stix is like stay calm free and stuff like that. Oh, that's cute. So, well, Have you seen the CLG games at the LCS, Dong? <laughs> I have not. All right. Well, don't look at top lane. Uh, <laughs> number six, TSM Sarcasm. Who is that? I believe that's TSM Academy's jungler, maybe. Like it's the, uh, I believe. Speaker. Oh, yeah. I don't. Maybe it's no. It's not Speaker. Like he's called like he used to be like sarcasm orgasm or something like that. You know, like, I remember that. <laughs> wow, guy. story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, number seven, Golden Guardians. Closer. This is a guy that looks to be an absolute beast in the jungle. What are your thoughts on this one? Mm. I think he's really good. I mean, mechanically, he's really, really talented. And I think right now the best junglers are very mechanical. So it's like Lee Sin, Kiana, Elise, like all those kind of champions. I think he has a really, really good aggressive play style that like will throw a lot of people off in solo queue. That's what I noticed. He's always trying to kill the other jungler. And that's a. I think that is the one way to truly please your laners as a jungler in solo queue. It's just don't help them. Just make sure the other jungler is not there. Definitely. All right, number eight. This is a face that might be familiar to some people. The Odd Orange. The Odd oh, Orange. God. This guy is still around, still kicking. Clearly not on teams? the team at this at this point. I don't think he's on rating because he had a stint on Team Liquid Academy last split. It says Polar Ace on his OP.GG account. Yeah, that's that's him, right? Polar Ace, the Odd Orange. They're all the same person. Oh, okay. I thought that might be a um, team. I think Polars might be a team. What are your thoughts on this guy, uh, Centaurin? Because he seemed to have chances at going pro and going and going deep, given opportunities, but it's never taken off. Does he just need to try harder? Is like what's going on with with Ot Orange here? Is he a solo queue prodigy that keeps piquing people's interest? Honestly, I'm not too sure. I don't know like how he is in a team environment, but I've always thought he's a good solo queue jungler. I mean, if you think about like all the free agent solo queue junglers. I can't think of many. I'd always think of Odd Orange as one of them. Yeah. Um, he's definitely like a good player. And I mean, sometimes I'll even watch his stream to like see how he's doing. Well, look at that. He watches his streams. <laughs> Number nine, Solo. This is the top laner, former top laner of Last Split's Echo Fox. This is the top laner at some point of some academy teams as well. The only top laner here. Everybody else is either jungler or some role. This is the only top laner in this top 10 uh, list. Is There's Ruin, too. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, my bad. Two <laughs> top laners. Thoughts on Solo? Is he toxic in solo queue? Uh, I mean, he'll ping a few times. You know, like, be like, hey, I need help and stuff like that. I, I played on team with him before. I actually felt like he was... Improving a lot in terms of like being more positive. I thought like, so too. As a person, he's always seemed very kind. So I'd yeah. never experienced that toxicity. Um, are you familiar with Solo Dong? I have no idea who this guy is. Okay, then we'll move on. <laughs> Number 10, Hoonji King. My guess is this is a Korean player. 
Honestly, I'm not exactly sure where he's from. If it's Lan, OC, or Korean. Um, he's probably a Korean player. I just know he plays a lot of Athelius and a lot of Senna. And, uh, okay. It says X10 Esports. So already top 10 list has five foreign players. So number one is Korea. Number four is Korea. Number five is Korea. Uh, number seven is Turkey. Number 10 might be somewhere in Asia. What's going on? Why are we not having local talent be at the top of the NA ladder? Well, that's funny because there's also 50% 50 imports in LCS. Yeah. So that's perfect. Okay. And you're an import as well, technically. So technically. <laughs> I guess we were just never good. Like We never had talent. It always belonged to other people. All right. Well. We can I don't find think that's true. I think I think it's uh, <laughs> I, there's no no. I don't think that's true at all. I think that NA just doesn't put any effort towards nurturing their own like player pool, right? right. No, you're 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 right. Nobody actually bothered at. No one back. cares. Like if you're if you're in a like, what is the path today to go from? Because like there's still like young people like in collegiate leagues that want to go pro and they play. You know, they're dedicated. They they willing to grind and they're willing to play solo queue they're willing to put the hours in but like who's going to give them the chance right because today i feel like in na at least it, it's also not just about the uh the skill that a player brings to your team but it's also sometimes like the brand that the person also brings to your org so i feel like a lot of times sometimes like maybe they'll hold on to players that maybe don't try hard as much because their brands are valuable to them or because you know, like academy players, they're not really given a lot of resources uh, in comparison to, you know, like how much NA spends on foreign imports, right? I understand that foreign imports are obviously uh, tested and tried and true, but the fact is, is like NA just doesn't really seem to give a shit about their young players and they don't really try to foster them in the same way that other countries seem to. So, yeah, I mean, for me, it's like when I was going pro, um, <clears throat> that's a lot of different tournaments like Dreamhack and stuff like that. Yeah. And the fun, the good thing for me was LCS players could participate in those tournaments. So for me, I was a young guy. I'd compete in those tournaments. I'd be playing against LCS players. And that way I'd like see how good I am. Like how good am I actually? And if I did well against pro players, that's the easy way to pick up people. You'd be like, oh, this guy, he looks pretty good even against all the LCS players. Um, now I feel like the main way to get in is I have a really high win rate in Challenger. And then maybe people will be like, oh, wow, this guy's actually good. Or maybe you'll go to scouting grounds and that's the other way I see people getting on a team. I think the way I see it is just how you both have poised it is the actual way of getting in is a, a, a wall as high as a pull-up bar. And because of the lack of steps or any other tournaments or any other path to get there, the player is just expected to somehow get to that point all on their own without the easy, here's a minor tournament, here's a minor local tournament, here's a, a larger land that can pay for your next trip and another tournament that can build up to the way to play with an academy team or an LCS team. And that's a system that already exists in China where they have such a intricate network of tournaments that whether you want to be a pro or not, you can still participate in the same path, make money, make friends, and have a good time doing it versus holy shit, I got to grind and hopefully team up with Bjergsen and have a really good <laughs> jungle game then. And maybe I'll get a friend dad and oh my God, Peter talked to me. Like That's so rare. Yeah, basically. All right. We went over the top 10, but there is still a list that we have to address. <laughs> the top 10 of the FlyQuest guys. <laughs> Santorin, you are ranked number 23. Yep. Ooh, that's uh, pretty good. What's your LP at? Like 840. How, how many games have you played? Probably like around 150 on that account. Wow. But uh, I quit that account. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, are you still doing with anybody on your new account? No, I haven't been doing. But to me, like everyone talks about duo abusing and stuff like that. As a pro player, it only makes sense to do because if you're just playing with a bunch of random people, of you're not learning much. So I hate that like do abuse term because actually I just feel like that's the optimal way for pros to get better. Building synergy. And that synergy seems to be the closest with Revenge, <laughs> who is ranked number 32. Then we've got Turtle at 139, Triple 
your academy mid laner at 183. Viper 217, JJ 365, Ignar 460. Big drop off coming though. <laughs> Mash 1157, Fnatic 1855, PoE not even ranked. Question marks on this guy. What's going on? Does PoE not like solo queue? Oh, uh, let me check his account because maybe they just don't have it. Give me a sec. What do you think, Dong? While he while he looks this up, is are these rankings the ranking of a team that you feel like, whoa, that's they're stacked, or or would you have preferred seeing a higher set of of uh, placements for FlyQuest? I mean, solo queue is not really a great indication as to how well a team will I do. I disagree. Mean, I Every team in Korea that has ever won, always won with all their players being at the peak or near the peak of solo queue. If I remember correctly, I remember SKT when they were at their peak. I think uh, Wolf, their support was, I think, low masters. So Wolf was the meme. Wolf was the outlier. Everybody else, Faker and Bang were always at the top. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard Wolf, to climb when you have there nails. There's Wolf. Um, I think one of their one of their junglers was also low challenger, not like high challenger, but in general, like solo queue. It, obviously it matters and it is a good indication of how good a player is but it's not like the end all be all like oh this guy's a god at solo queue and so he's a, a god at professional play like professional play is a completely different game uh from solo queue because you know you have one, one of the things that i find interesting is that pro players always communi uh t talk about the lack of communication in solo queue but I just feel like they're, they're maybe just a little spoiled in terms of good communication because, like, <laughs> they're, you know, like, you're playing with five guys all day and they're, they're like, you know, talking about pings and everything. Like, you know everything up to date. You're getting, like, you know, a play-by-play -play of what's happening in every single lane. You don't have to, like, zone, like, hover over every single lane like you do in solo queue. So it, it's different, you know? It's it's not the same thing. It's, it's so it, just because it is you different, can manage. Although... I believe Challenger is what the top 100, I think it's 300, top sure. 300. Yeah, so there's a lot of players here that are not in that, which is which is what I'm thinking. Because I'm thinking if you're if you're at the top, just be Challenger. Because I think Grandmaster is is not the place to be where you're trying to make a run to be a, a world contender, right? Like. That's what I'm. That's the standard I hold for for some of these players. So, yeah, I mean, so it's just like yeah. you practice against better players. So, like, if I, I mean, every time I rank up in your account when I'm playing in Masters, I'm like, God, what are all these like random players that are not playing to the same level as the people in Challenger? So, if I was to play Masters tier like always, I feel like I'd just not improve as much as like playing against the best players in your region. Yeah, and that actually is a perfect segue into our next segment we're talking about all this high level shit this is the thing where we explain to the goldies at home explain like i'm gold <laughs> and the topic for today is one that i feel very passionate about i think centaurin you will too i don't know how much you'll you'll feel about this nong but i'm almost certain there is no way in hell you have not made multiple videos about this subject because it is so important and you're not a mechanics guy you're a knowledge guy this is weak side strong side let's let's run it down i want to i want to hear from you first on what is weak side strong side but explain it to somebody that is gold this is somebody that doesn't read the patch notes this is somebody that doesn't know that aphelios even got released in fact he thinks set is a teaser for the fighting game. He didn't even know it was part of League of Legends. How does this player understand what weak side, strong side is and play it out? Well, uh, what is weak side, strong side? I don't think you mentioned that. Yeah, that's what it is. What What, what is it? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I don't think you mentioned <laughs> I, I, that. I didn't think I had to do that, but I will. What is weak so side, it's strong when side? your jungler is on your side, you can play aggressive because the okay. jungler is that's, there okay, and the other I, side I, is the weak side. That's what I was side. like inclining to it. I was like, okay. So basically, um, weak side, strong side is just the idea of like, basically, if you have one winning lane or one side of the map that's winning, usually in solo queue, you have, you know, obviously you have three lanes, top, mid, jungle. Um, you want to help out the, the side of the, the map that is doing well that is getting killed so if if your bot lane is losing 
they're down two kills, they're down some farm. It's probably not a great idea to go down there and try to gank because if you die there, the game is pretty much over. So you, uh, because the enemy jungler is probably going to focus that side of the jungle or that side of the map as well, you want to go top lane. You just want to try to create one side of the map that's actually winning as opposed to trying to you know help a losing side. Um, and you're, you're right, I did make a, a video about this with some much more colorful analogies that I think included condoms. Oh, but oh please expand. <laughs> I don't think... I'm not sure. Is this a family show? Like, I don't know. I don't even know what this is families like do watch it, but we don't have the evidence to confirm it. <laughs> okay, but basically, okay, it's like, um, I mean, it, if you have one side of the map that is getting fucked really hard, you don't want to go to that side because no one wants to fuck someone who's been fucked all over already. Okay, you want you want to fuck someone disagree. who hasn't been disagree. fucked yet. Disagree. You want to fuck someone who is just fresh, who is you know. They're just they're just ripe for fucking. They're okay. You don't want somebody else's sloppy seconds. All right. That that's that's all. I, that's that's it. Yeah. Well, you asked, so that's. Well, oh, I no, can't see I'm the reaction happy right with now. what I got. Okay. I want to hear from you, Santorin. Now, can you top that? <laughs> yeah, I can definitely top that, but I can definitely explain from a jungle perspective how frustrating it is when a weak side player is playing strong side, like. There's so many games where people go zero ten because like they're not playing to weak side. So so can you explain it from the jungle point of view? Because I think that's that's where you're coming from as well. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of the time you'll have vision on one side too. Um. So wherever your weak side is, let's say it's a zero two Riven, for example, that person, if I'm not on that side, he should try to play defensive, like put defensive vision and hawk your turret and let your team carry you. But this guy, he will not hawk turret. <laughs> He'll hawk enemy turret. With enemy jungle being right next to him. So, like, he'll literally go zero ten, and the game will just be unplayable. Whereas, it just hits a point where you can't carry hard enough, like, because people are just inting too much on the other side. And I feel like one of the main issues for at least a jungle in solo queue is like, people just don't give a fuck. If they're zero two, they'll keep just fighting and they don't care about winning. They just want to keep fighting and they'll be like, oh, a bit of jungle wins because, I mean, I'm not on his side, right? Right, because he's presenting himself to the other jungler constantly, if, and that's why he's taking advantage. Yeah. I think the way I would describe weak side, strong side would be in very actionable terms where I don't think the golds can even understand. Like, oh, I, I thought O2 Riven was strong. It's Riven. It should be good. It's got all. Oh, it's got big sword, <laughs> right? So I think that's how a gold would look at the game. So even going as far as exp of understanding what is weak and what is strong is probably warped in their eyes. You know, they think that, oh, Blitzcrack is always strong. I can always fight. Or Leona, I can go. Like, how else do I play Leona? I always go in. So Wait, wait, wait. I can I ask? Wait, Crumbs, do you, wait, do you guys play with low elo players? So I, I literally treat everybody that is not a pro player as a low elo player. Same. So if you, play, like, what's the, if what's you the have lower? never played pro... You're have the low you, elo. Have you okay? What have you played? Like, have you recently played with, let's say, gold or silver lo, uh, elo play? Oh yeah, normals with friends with randoms. Yeah, that happens constantly. I, I don't know if you're describing them quite accurately. I feel like a lot of gold players and silver players, they they know what's right and wrong to do. It's just that when they get into a game, a lot of that knowledge just kind of they forget it or they forget to apply it. I don't. I don't feel like any gold player would look at a okay. ribbon and say, "Oh, she's zero and two. She's strong." All right. So then, I, like, I, I like will. I'll expand on that. To, You're I'll not get, retarded. Let, let me so. get past that then. Um, if I'm a gold player and I don't know how to actually do those things well, how do I play the side? I think the my advice would be press tab and mirror the scores. Right. Who is strong versus who is weak, right? If the Darius is 3-0 and and whoever he's up against is 0-3, well, your side is losing that, right? One has greater numbers than yours. That's a weak side. If your Leona and your Caitlyn are 5-0 are and and the other guys are 0-5, that's your strong side, right? You just do the, you, you add those numbers in lanes only, and then you can determine, oh, this is a strength, this is not a strength. If it gets more complicated... Press tab again, look at the levels, look at the items, look at the ultimates, what's going on. And then from that, you can just see, oh, well, the numbers say this is a strong or this is a weak side. And this is something that happened to me a lot where I would try to be a gentleman 
in League of Legends, I'd say, oh, well, we could get a fair fight down here in the bottom. And it's a two on two and everybody's even in goal. That's the wrong attitude. You need to have the attitude of a bully. You need to have the attitude of someone that's there to break someone's spirit. Where you look at a 3-0 and you say, I want to go to that guy's lane and I want to just obliterate the 0-3 because it's not only so much easier for us to get a, a fight to go our way, but if the enemy team piles on people, they're also going to lose. It's a, it's a magnet of losing, that losing side. And so the more you pressure that point, the more rewards you can gain. Basically, make them AFK. Yeah, that's actually how I, I that's how I used to play. No joke. My strategy was tilt them. Just make sure the enemy tilts. And we got a lot of tilted people on this show. Not us, but callers. Because we take calls at one eight five five solo Q Q U E. We don't have the last two UEs because the numbers would be too long. But you the viewer at home can call and we are gonna play some of those out because last time it was hilarious. Let's see if these guys will deliver. What do we got? Hey, yes. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and I'm calling from Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been playing Lee since beta, and I am you know, incredibly happy with the direction Riot's taking the game almost every season. I've never really been unhappy. Almost. Um, in terms of like the game quality. But I have noticed, as someone who has pretty much always played mid lane as their main role, I've noticed, and it really started around when Galio came out, that the mid role has kind of centered around less the traditional mage and more around tanky champions that have wave clear and uh, start impossible to kill. And it's kind of pushed traditional mage champions like Cassiopeia, Syndra, uh, and it's pushed champions like Vagar, who I used to love playing, it's pushed him more into like a bottom lane role. And I kind of feel like the space that was traditionally reserved for champions that have like you know ap and magic abilities uh out of the game for champions that are tanky and have damage and wave clear um so i was kind of wondering what your feelings are about that and if those champions have a new role in the game or if they have a different or if they should play in different positions or what you kind of think about that so i'd like to start and just set the floor with wait this. wait, wait. could i just say hold on he he said that he has no complaints about Riot's balancing ever. <laughs> is this is this scripted? Listen, listen, I swear to God, that, I feel like it's scripted. That's what I was going to say, right? This guy is from Washington. Exist. These, this is guys from Washington. They have legalized marijuana there. We don't know if he's been high the entire Canada time. Canada has legal weed. We've had it for like 10 years. It and hasn't I have been never met someone like that. <laughs> I mean, I personally consider myself a pretty chill guy and forgiving right. when it comes to my but I've had my fair share of complaints. No, complaints. no complaints in ten years. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> he's not a real person. That's 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 the setup right there. I don't uh, believe that. Yeah. Uh, All right, go ahead. I, I think he's overemphasizing on what was a f almost like a fling with tanky mid laners, and that's no longer that. You're not seeing Scion Nautilus mid lane anymore. Those champions have been phased out. It's back to mages. It's back to other things. So. I don't think the game is at a point where mid laner is not about mages. It's about a lot of things, and tanks can be one of them. Tanks are not in a good spot, but I just think he's wrong. I think the, the point that he was more so making, he was talking about like Cassiopeia and stuff, right? Like, because Cassio is a little bit. Good into tanks, right? Like, yeah, like She's, the bottom lane is stealing his mid lane picks, and mid lane is being replaced <laughs> with tanks. I don't, I don't know if that's a result. Uh, that's more of a result of casters being good in the bot lane, right? Because they synergize well with these aggressive supports. Yeah. As opposed to these... Uh, so that, that might just be support um, being strong as opposed to mages being weak. Uh, I, I think he was more so talking about these bulkier champions. Like, other than... I mean, you can, you can say, like, Galio, because he came into... The, he's not good right now, but, like, he came into the meta... Um, few seasons or a few seasons ago, and he's stuck around. Yeah. Um, but as to his point, I, I think it's just more people realizing that, you know, th there's never, you don't have to play exactly what the role says you have to play. You know, because like in more recent years, I feel like there's more new strategies that come up, like with funneling 
and oh, with God. these like mage bot laners and all these other weird things. And so people find different ways to counter these things. And so sometimes a tank will make it into the mid lane or sometimes a bruiser will make it into the mid lane because they're better against that strategy. Okay. Uh, as opposed to just like mages being bad. Mages aren't necessarily bad. It's just that people are, you know, when something's so good for so long, they're going to come up with different ways to try and counter that. Right. And so the counters come up with another counter to the, to the thing that they came up with. So it's just a cycle of the meta, I think. I'll give him a little bit of credit because if you think about how FPX won worlds, Dorian B was playing Nolus and Galio. Yeah. And <clears throat> to his point about mages against Galio and Nolus, if you have a really good jungler, you're probably going to go like, like that guy's probably going to go 0 to 5 against like a good Nolus Lee Sin combo or something like that. So I'll give him a little bit of credit, but I do think it's like phased out now, like in season 10. Um, but I can definitely see like in the past, there's definitely metas where. Thanks, we're really broken. Personally, I look forward to it to play Mundo against Syndra again. <laughs> freest matchup of my life. But he's not the only caller. We've got another one. Let's hear what our other fellows have to say. Hi, I'm Terry Pham from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I have a funny solo queue story. So I'm a jungle main, and I played with my duo, who was a mid main. And we were completely smashing that game. But it was basically a 4v5 for the whole game because our Nami would just run around and run into their vision. And this was like flat three ELO. So, like, we were trying our best to get that ELO. But the Nami kept running around into unwarded area and getting picked off. So the way we had to win was to keep spam pinging danger on her. And we couldn't get our eyes off her because if we did, she would just die and we would lose the next fight. We eventually did win that game, though. So. I think the humor was lost in the call, but what was his question? I, I, I other, <laughs> he was telling us how the Nami was inting so hard, they realized the only way to win was to follow her around while the enemy piled onto Nami and they would collapse and take her out. So I don't think that's funny. a question. I think not he's just kind of ranting. I, it sounds just normal. <laughs> Par for the course. <laughs> right? Like, is that not just happen to all of us? I mean, it's not that happens, I'm but I, I'm just saying that's not that's not really a question. That's a that's a rant. Yeah, yeah. So the the so the solo cute hotline, people can come in to do whatever. We've gotten some rants. We had a guy oh, okay. that was very sexually suggestive one time. We're not encouraging that. It's not that kind of phone line. You <laughs> might have misdialed. Do you guys want to say anything about that guy, or should we move on to our final call? Nami didn't play weak side well. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Should have listened to the Solo Q Super Show. Let's see what the third caller has got to say. Hi, my name is Adam, and I'm in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm calling with my Solo Q story. So this happened pretty recently, maybe a week or two ago. And uh, the game started out good. I was maybe 4 or 5-0 and on Hyper Carry ADC bot lane. My team, we were probably I don't know, 15 to 20 kills up to 4 or 5. And then my Darius just types in chat. I'm just sitting bot lane, farming some creeps, you know, how it goes. And then I see in chat, farming until we lose. I look, he is now, I think, 4-1 and one or something along those lines. He's up, like, double the CS. I'm up double the CS. And I think, oh, my jungle just, you know, did something stupid, set him off a little bit. But, you know, he's not really just going to sit there and AFK until we lose. Nope. Sure enough, he starts stealing all the farm from all the lanes, running around, dancing while we fight. And, you know, that's pretty much how the solo queue experience has been going lately. <laughs> Just something will set these like people with a mental of the two-year-old off, and then, oh, I guess you lose the game. So I, it's the soft inting that I think really kind of needs to be fixed. It's, you know, there's the AFKs, and you can kind of get your team to just FF at that point. But when it's when you have a 5-0 and Darius who's, you know, really strong, you're really strong, the game's still close even though he's AFK, but they just – choose not to win that's the that's the part that really kills you so uh yeah thank you that's my story so that sounds like someone that is dead on the inside and i'll also add that that story was funnier than the nami story maybe because they lost i think that starting i'm starting to see a trend that i enjoy the stories where people lose more than the ones that they win but this You're man did not person. walk away a loser he won Wild Turtles sign challenger jacket because that was our last uh, giveaway from our last episode. If you called in, you left a message, you'd have a shot. And if you asked for it, so you might have asked for it in another message. 
you, you actually just had to phone in and say, hey, could I have this? And we would have given it to you. <laughs> um, thoughts on this guy's story? Darius chooses to run it down. Somebody set him off. Well, I actually complain a lot about that on Twitter um, because Riot doesn't really do anything to soft enders. Like, they'll go 1-15, in 15, but that's okay because they're still playing the game. Um, it happens a lot in high too, especially people that are trying to climb. They figure out they can't climb anymore. Well, I guess I might as well end them. <laughs> uh, and then they're like trying to like do the line where it's like, oh, as long as I don't get banned, you know, like you just try to be like right around the edge of getting perm banned or something like that, but not actually. So soft ending is a good way to do that. Could it be that inting is just more fun than playing the game? I think it probably, I mean, especially for those people that play like Yasuo, Riven, that kind of stuff. Like it hits the point you can't even play the game anymore if you're like 0-5 or something. So maybe it's just fun to run it down. Right, like clearly some <laughs> people are getting a kick out of inting more than anything else. Yeah. There might be something to this thing that we're not looking at. I know one person who said, uh, because I got inted on last game, I have to restore balance to the universe <laughs> and int in this game now. And that was just, I was like, Karmic how are injustice. you? injustice. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like restoring karma, restoring balance to the universe, like they're Thanos or something. But to the point, uh, besides obviously Riot should do something about soft inting, but to me, I think that whenever I have someone like that where it's like, oh, I give up, uh, I don't want to play anymore, I don't, I, I don't care anymore, what I will say often is I, I just try to tell them, no, keep playing, I will carry you, just keep playing, just keep staying in this game and i'll carry you like if you tell people stuff like that just just type in just just babysit them a little bit and you might be able to win and usually that like i wouldn't say it works all the time but i would say 80 percent of the time where i say something like that or just say something like to encourage them and to just tell them i will carry you like they usually stay for the when you tell them there's free low they'll usually stay and and keep playing so do you have that experience, Centauran? Because I don't. Yeah, I don't really. So for me, it's like if I say that, that guy might just fucking rage quit the game. Like, right? <laughs> you're wa you're tr walking on but if he's But if he's already soft inting, it's better that he rage uh, rage quits, right? Because he's not inting anymore. Well, so either way, <laughs> it's a better scenario for you. I, I guess because you can also report him off of the game and maybe you get a thing saying, oh, yeah, he got yeah. banned. Um, but in general, for me, it's like if I have a guy like that and I don't think I can carry hard enough as the other fall, I try to somehow get a kill for him. If he gets a kill, he gets a little bit of happy. Maybe he'll stop playing the game again. That's kind of like me. Like if I see a guy being like zero free, where I can maybe still kill the lane, I'll happily sacrifice my other side just to make him a little bit of like have a little bit of a good time. Because once he's back in the game, like he'll probably not end as much. I personally feel like I can't talk to these people. <laughs> I feel like we are not the same species. <laughs> that whatever I say, they're going to hear whatever they want to hear. Right? If I say there's free low, they're telling me, yeah, for the enemy, <laughs> I'm giving up. Yeah. So I, I really have a tough time. And I think part of it comes from a personal experience of mine that it just feels like you have a greater influence over an outcome when you lose and you ruin a game for someone than when you win because i felt like when you win rarely do you feel like the victory came at the hands of teamwork and a, a joint effort where a lot of people were united to to achieve something whereas on a loss it did take that same singular effort but you did include everybody in the same misery so at the very least everybody's involved and so you can say yeah you know what i spent a good day today like i, I influenced a lot of people's lives Maybe I mean, for it the is worst. solo queue. <laughs> Listen, some people take baby steps to get out of their shell. <laughs> Fair. I see you have doubts I, about this, Dong. I personally feel like maybe, no offense, but I feel like you're maybe just spoiled by competitive play and how synergistic. Oh, the, I am. Uh, I absolutely yeah. am. Yeah. Oh, I have incredibly high expectations. I expect yeah. every single game for every lane to not only guard Expect entrances, nothing and you'll never to be disappointed. understand where the enemy jungler started, to respect that path, acknowledge my own route, prepare the lane for me to help them, 
and then recall together and go back out onto the map and try to acquire vision and then see what we can do as a team play. And I expect every ping to be listened to. And if I miss pinged, I expect them to know that the ping simply meant something else and that they should be high level enough to know what that ping meant because they would be looking at the map just as much as I do. God damn. Are you going to marry your solo queue players too? Oh, listen, so if I find my wife in solo queue, you know I, she's a keeper. Just kidding. There's not. I've tried. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've tried. Okay. Yeah, I believe that's, that's, gonna, some... that's close. That's close to the end of our show. In fact, it is the end of our show. So thank you, Santorin, for being here with us. And thank you, Dong Wap, for showing up and... This is a platform for both of you to plug anything you'd like. What do you, what's going on in your lives? Uh, planning some trees. Right. You're planning trees with the FlyQuest initiative. And when are your next games? When can people tune in to see you play? We play on Saturday and Sunday against C9 and EG. Oh, okay. So essentially brothers and stepbrothers that you're facing. Yeah. And what's going on with you, Dong? Up any new videos coming up that people can check out, or an old one that you'd like to point them to? Uh, recently made a video about why Talia Bot is kind of broken. I saw that uh, one. It coming was very out. Good. Thank you. Uh, coming out with a new video. I'm gonna be doing uh, Dave Mon, the uh, Pike mid laner who's hit challenger uh, consistently. I think he's like rank 30 right now on the solo queue ladder. He's got some ridiculous KDAs. So I'm going to be doing that, uh, just YouTube, Don Hwap, lol, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Don Hwap, lol, as well. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, that's it for our Solo Q Super Show. We'll see you next time, where our guests are going to be Gen G, Jaden, and Power of Evil, who is now ranked 180 or something, just out of nowhere. He's pretty good. <laughs> Turns out he's on a pro team. See you next time. Yeah.